What's good, y'all? So today, we're gonna be tackling this bumper. This bumper is from a red Chevy Caprice, and you probably can't see too well from there, but we'll get a close-up in a second. It's got a bust right here. I hit this last week when I had some sort of mental deficiency in my Honda just off screen and uh, thought I put it in reverse to back up and I put it in neutral. Started talking to my neighbor out my window because they needed something super important. I rolled forward and pop, hit my car. Now, since I am the owner of both cars, I'm not gonna claim insurance and be a dick to the other guy. That'd be kind of weird out here screaming at myself, wouldn't it? So anyway, we're gonna sand this guy off for sure. Get it down to looking where it could actually be uh, fixed. Figure out what's exactly going on here, how bad the damage is. It looks like it's pretty bad. And uh, maybe we'll do a bunch of other stuff too, but right now I'm gonna focus on this bumper. Okay, let's get started. All right, so after careful consideration, I am going to take the bumper all the way off of this car. Two reasons. One, spending my day on my knees, sanding this yesterday or day before, whichever day it was, 
Now, spoiler alert, this doesn't all take place in the same day. I hurt my back. So, uh, instead of doing this on my knees and under the car, we're gonna pull it off, put it on my table back there, and sand it that way. Second reason is there is so much grease and oil and stuff underneath the front end of this car, as you've seen, that I think it's gonna be easier to take the bumper off and get a full front end spray across. I mean, otherwise, right now with uh, the one pallet or one, uh, one jack that I have, it's kind of hard to lift an entire car up to completely spray the undercarriage. So, a shout out to Sarah Fox. It is called an undercarriage, whether you like to believe it or not. Anyway, yeah, two reasons. One, can't really do this type of work on my back a lot. I have to save that for whenever I'm actually taking the spark plugs and stuff out. And two, we're going to get a full, easier spray on the front end of this car. Plus, there's, I mean, there's got to be red clay and Arkansas dirt piled up under this whole thing. So, it'll be good to get it off here. Anyway, that's what we're doing right now. So, none of these bumper brackets are on. I need to fix that. I can't really turn the camera around here. My chest is... Yep. Not a single one of them is buckled in. This one doesn't even have one. The bump stop, or the uh, hydraulic bumps, this one's rusty. And this one's covered in oil. I'll figure out where that oil's coming from, but I have a feeling it's probably from right here. This little oil cooler. Let's see, there it is. This radiator's warped, the oil cooler's warped. I mean, the bracket doesn't even line up. I don't even know where it would bolt in, honestly. So we'll have to see. It does there's not like a hole anywhere over here. Maybe there was a there is a there's a nut or a screw right here. Maybe there was a bracket that hang between these two to buckle them together, but I don't really know. This design doesn't seem right. I don't know if it's what my brother and I did or if the design is cockamamie, but like this support brace here is a, in front of the oil cooler and it's leaning the oil cooler out some. But like I said, that may have been my brother and I putting it together the wrong way. So I'll get down here, lift this car up one afternoon, see exactly where this bracket goes. There we go, right there. I don't feel anything that it could stick to. So, I don't know. Okay, so we're under the front of the car, just past the radiator, which is right here. Checking the bushings. The sway bar bushings look pretty good. And the linkage looks good too. I changed those in like 2012, somewhere around there. Pretty rough time changing them, but it was not terribly difficult. See how nasty and oily everything is? I can't wait to get this thing up and spray it off with degreaser and get rid of all this nasty looking shit everywhere.
much good metal under here. This is crazy. Okay, I'm going to take some uh, liquid wrench and just put it on these bushings here. Uh, I intend to replace these completely. Because they definitely will need them. And really, this is just a protectant. Let's take a look here. Hold on. Bear with me. And I'm spraying this probably on the back of my brakes, but I'm not driving this car for a while now, so it's okay. So, well, yeah, that definitely sprayed on the brakes. But anyway, so we're going to do that on both sides. Um, gosh, i got a long way to go. But this will help lubricate them so when I actually do start working on them, it's a, it's an easier process. Um, they'll need ball grease and stuff like that. We all get ball grease, don't we? You feel me? <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so I'm not going to be driving this car anytime soon, so don't worry about what's on the brakes. I've got to actually pull the wheels and tires off and do some, some work in this little area here, uh, cleaning it up. So I'll be able to wipe all that stuff off the of brakes and test them before I actually drive again. Okay, time to do the other side. In the last video, I talked about an area on the car in the engine bay that uh, I didn't get to, and it is is this right here down here in this tray where the uh, the cool radiator and cooler go so anyway I'm just gonna put some degreaser well if I can get my degreaser to work Uh, hey guys, just wanted to uh, whoo, take a quick break from degreasing this car. Just let you know about a little old, uh, I think it's Oscar winning movie called There Will Be Blood, starring Daniel Day Lewis and Paul Dano, directed and written by the one and only P.T. Anderson, Paul Thomas Anderson. It's one of my favorite movies. If uh, I ever reference I Drink Your Milkshake, it comes from this film. It's one fucked up movie. I uh, completely recommend it to anybody who's a cinephile or somebody that wants to get into auteur filmmaking. The first 14 minutes and 30 seconds or 16 seconds, I forget exactly which one, there's no dialogue. But it takes place in an oil mining field and it is certifiably fucking intense. Is a master class in filmmaking. But anyway, so as you can see, I mean, you can't really see, but that is not a bumper. That is a bumper guard. Shield. I don't know what the fuck. Maybe that's the bumper. Maybe that's what they call the bumper. Who fucking knows? But uh, anyway, I took the bumper shield off. It's urethane. It's got a big crack in it, and there's a bunch of shit behind it. Which is really funny because I don't I don't guess I paid much attention to it when my brother and I put the car back together, but it was damaged and repaired on both the outside of the urethane bumper and the inside. So uh, so anyway, yeah, pretty cool. And there's all kinds of nasty shit on it. Like, yeah, it looks a little dirty. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, it needs a lot more cleaning. But one day at a time, my friends, one day at a time. So right now, uh, you just caught me while I was pressure washing the other side of this car, and I'm just going to keep doing so. I put a bunch of degreaser on the outside. I can't really reach it on the inside at this point in time, but I'm going to eventually do that. I'm going to get it all up on four jack lifts. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my neighbor's dog talking to me. 
he wants to come out and say hi to me. He got he got he got uh, reprimanded, smacked for rushing out the door to come say hello to me. I don't personally care, but my neighbor's trying to train him, so I get it. But uh, anyway, yeah, we're gonna degrease as far back as we can go. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. See how nice this looks tomorrow after it dries off. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to spraying. Thanks for the, thanks for hanging out with me while I friggin' ramble about uh, amazing movies. Oh my god, this movie fucks so hard. I saw it last year twice, and I'll probably watch it again this year twice. All right, bye. Okay, I don't really have the equipment to uh, to get really good undershots of the car just yet, so just bear with this uh, haphazard shot. So right here, this piece of plastic is where I just took those two screws out, and there's two more, completely different sizes, by the way, uh, right here. You can see one of them, one of them is one of them's right here, one of them's just a little bit further back. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those out too. Okay, so for the last step, I recommend removing this part from the fender well. It's got two bolts here, two bolts here. Maybe there's a fifth one sometimes. Mine only had four in each of them. But they're super easy to remove, and the reason I suggest taking them off is that you probably need to clean them for one. Look how nasty it is. And two, one of the bolts for the fender on the very back side is incredibly difficult to get. Okay, so we're gonna use a little plastic tool. You can get these for like $2 at Harbor Freight. And you've got four of these, you've got two on each side. And they should just pop right up like that. It looks like somebody's tried to repair it before. I'm about to find out what that is, but I think it's some kind of, let's take a look. Yep, it's like a bag that they bundled up and stuck in this nest of busted parts. It's. It's a uh, bubble wrap. Crazy. So as you can see, this is the passenger side. I'm disinclined to believe it. I actually did that the other day, bumping into it, because this is where I hit. And obviously this is way away. It might have broke it loose, but somebody was definitely trying to repair it before I ever got it. Thank you. 
Oh, hey, didn't see you there, bruh. You gotta hear on my phone. Can't zoom her out in this mode. I know. What's up? I think you can see what I'm doing. Fuck, I don't know. I can't get that close to it. Yeah, that's fine. You know what? I'm gonna handheld this just for a second. Okay, you get the picture. It's uh, very high pressure water blasting away, really gross stuff. So I got to get back to it. I can't really juggle this phone. And I, uh, I I broke my tripod. It was cheap, but I freaking obliterated it just a minute ago. So I'll get another one. I got like seven of them. But right now I'm going to keep working on this. So see you guys later.
So here we go, in some better light. The wheels are looking way better. The engine is getting cleaner by the day. This is just me covering up the alternator. That back fender wall, or the back, I don't know what the hell that thing's called. That, the wall, firewall, there we go. I knew I had it somewhere in my brain. Looking way better. This is looking good. This is actually paint from yesterday's adventure. And somewhere right down in here is the lid for this. I don't, I don't know where it's at to be honest, but we'll get there. And look how clean this is now. That shelf there at the bottom, no grease anymore. So amazing. So amazing, it looks so much better. Frame is still rusty in places, and there's places that I haven't reached yet, but we'll get there. It's another cold day today. It's, it's effing weather, I tell you. One, one second I'm like ready to rock. Even yesterday, like it was 68 when I came outside, and by the time by the time I went inside, it was 55 or 54. It was cold cold on my wet body because I had been spraying the car down all day uh, and today I think it's only like 43 or 44 but anyway let's take a better look at the car while we've got sunlight so the bumper looks good it's got some surface rust but I'm gonna actually take that off with a wire brush and then I'm gonna touch up the paint to stop it the wheels look so much better I mean, obviously, you get close enough to them, you're like, wow, these are trash. But the, I probably damaged the, the clear coat, which um, in my video yesterday I said was okay. And today I woke up and felt the same way. So we're good there. This wheel's crazy because it hadn't even been treated. The other three wheels had been treated for weeks on and off with limited results. And in the back of my car, I found... Um, carbon choke cleaner sprayed that all on there and you could wipe the rubber away on this wheel on all of them the front two wheels tend to they're holding on to more of the plasti dip than the back two wheels that's mainly just because of the differential and uh braking but this is our setup for the day so i'm going to sit up on this table we're going to clean this um weather stripping that goes under the hood this goes on the uh, on the on the wiper banister, and this goes on the hood. And as you can see, there, this one's really filthy. This one's not quite as bad, but it has got some sticky stuff on it. So we're going to use some wheel and tire cleaner and kill it. Um, and then I'm going to work on the inside of this bumper. I didn't show it in yesterday's video, but as you can see, it's filthy. I probably should have used the pressure washer on it, but we'll. Uh, We'll do what we can until I decide, hell no, I ain't doing it no more. So, all right. Let's jump on this. And I think this might be the last task for the video this week. With this weather jumping up and down, it's hard to stay on one thing, you know. But I'm happy. Very happy to have these amazing results. Come out here and look at this car. And I'm like, shit, this car is a different car than the one that was sitting here. With the hood all buffed out. I think I might just clear the hood. I think that would be pretty cool for a while until it gets painted. Just clear it so this will stop rusting. I mean, it hasn't actually, I don't know if you can see it with the, there we go. Um, I think it'd be neat to clear it. The old ghost flames and stuff, I think it's pretty neat. But yeah, I might just clear it for a while and then whenever it comes time to, you know, actually uh, paint the car, we'll paint the hood too.
Look at this. This is old pine needles that are absolutely crushed down into this plastic foam, or this, uh, I don't know what it is, foam, I guess. Crushed into it. And here's another piece. a brush like so and I guess we'll work on the nastiest one first because this thing is filthy I'm not gonna go too far down each one of them It's interesting the effect that cleaning something has on your personality. A lot of times when you feel out of control and you feel like you're not really sure what you're supposed to be doing, uh, you could prevent that by doing something that's out of your norm or something that changes the physical appearance of something, an item that you always see. And psychologically, you can benefit greatly from cleaning things. And so my house is getting clean just like this is. And, and I think honestly I could film cleaning my house and, and uh, make a good run at it. But I'm a little more embarrassed about how my house looks than my car. Now, by no means am I a hoarder. I live with a family member and take care of them and the house is clean, but I got a little bit of clutter that bugs me. But with this car, Slowly but surely, that island is cleaning, getting cleaned up. And that floating home, that driving, that four-wheeled home, in a way. I don't live in it. That's not what I mean. But it's my possession, and it's like a home to me. It actually looks really good. I'm surprised by that. I was thinking it'd be dry rotted. But anyway, if you ever find yourself feeling out of control or feeling like you need some control back in your life and, uh, you know, obviously you can't control other people or what they do, but you can control how clean your area or your car is. And I find that I'm not out here trying to find peace because I want control. I've actually relinquished the ideation of needing control over traffic and what people think of me and so on and so forth. I'm just regaining control over my level of comfort with the car. I like thinking every day that this car is getting more and more cleaned. I like the thought of going to a show, car show, and having people admire this relic of time that is the 1996 Chevrolet Impala. At one time, the fastest car in its um, in its stock type, one of the fastest cars on the street in 1996. Um, of course, we have obliterated that, those times and those zero to sixties in small little four cylinders now. I mean, the world's a lot different than it was in 1996. But the notion that like, I'm gonna enjoy the living hell out of the fact that this car is super clean is huge to me. And being able to share that with somebody who has a passion either for the car or for cars in general will be a huge um, positive, almost overwhelming, I'm sure, feeling for me because I can already sense how great it's going to be to share the cleanliness of this car with someone else. You know, I used to pick friends up and have to kick trash around and it was just one of those things where I was always embarrassed um, to have to kick the trash around, but I still did it. But on the inside, I was kind of screaming that, you know, I, I could have picked that up. I could have kept the car clean. I could have made it more presentable. Most friends don't give a shit about that kind of stuff. I'll be honest, I do. I judge solely on the appearance of homes and vehicles and cleanliness of dogs and so on and so forth. The toilet's a good example too. If you got big ass dookie streaks in your toilet, that's kind of weird. 
I say this knowing full well that I do, but I'm not having company, and that's what I mean. Like when I present to company, I got a really, really clean house. So anyway, take everything I say in stride, by the way. <laughs> what good is my opinion? There we go, that one's clean. It just needs to dry out some. We'll just put it back on the car, be the easiest thing to do. And I don't know what my neighbor is barbecuing, but it smells like some dog turds. He usually barbecues really good smelling stuff. There we go. I think that's clean. All right, time for the bigger item. So this one's not... Yeah, it's pretty grody. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's stinky. That bitch is nasty. Look. It's busted open for a player. <laughs> it's good. It's still still got good balance to it. And the uh, tire cleaner's got a little bit of a shine in it, so it looks like it's actually going to proof this rubber. But the best part about it is the rubber's not bad at all. Let's move on from that to these little rubber bushings. I've had them soaking for about 15 minutes. I'm not exactly sure. Um, not exactly sure whether or not I'm going to be able to get these clean. But basically, they just lay over the top of some uh, bolts at uh, both ends of the hood. So let's give those a scrub. Okay, so all I gotta do is line these points up with the holes and uh, that's not the right direction. Now this fit when I put it on there, I don't know what the fuck is going on. None of these holes line up. These do though. Oh, right, yeah. I went one too far. <laughs> I didn't go far enough over is what it was. I started too early on this side. And uh, I definitely need new clips because these are not sticking into place anymore. I didn't tear them when I pulled them out. They were pretty well shot. I got here. Ain't nothing a rubber mallet can't take care of. Ow, fuck. 
fuck, I hit my thumb. God damn it. Fuck. All right, so that doesn't necessarily fit too well, as you can tell. It's not doing well at the moment, but I don't care. So anyway, this whole thing goes here, pops down right there, and it just is a protectant barrier. I'm gonna fix this. In fact, I think I put it on backwards anyway. I don't, I don't foresee like this being open going forward into wind. I think it actually needs to be this way. Uh, excuse me, this way, out. So I think I put it on backwards, but also just doesn't fit anymore. So I gotta get new little, uh, new little buttons, little screw taps or whatever the hell these things are called. I need to learn my lingo too. Anyway, yeah, all right. Okay, this one's pretty easy here, mainly because it goes back on the same way it, it was. It fits still, so it's got these little tiny holes in each of the each piece of the unit. Each piece of the unit. What the fuck am I talking about? It has these tiny holes, and then you stretch them over these two tabs on each of these uh, plastic screws. And uh, I'm gonna say it's easy, and then I'm gonna fuck this up. God damn it, fuck this, I'm not filming this. I'm about to throw this mother... That was super fucking easy. I did such a good job, and it was <clears throat> really easy. Fuck, uh, seriously, fuck weather stripping. It would help if I had the right tools. You know, I'm doing this with these uh, hot dog sized digits. Shout out to everything everywhere all at once for being the weirdest movie that everybody seems to love. It was good, but it was like 25 minutes too long. Really fucking cool movie though. I mean like, can't take that much away from it. I'd rather see more footage and it make less sense than less footage and no. It was an okay movie though. All right. I think I'm actually going to call it this week. <clears throat> it's too cold to spray stuff right now. My hands are really cold. Um, I really need to just take the pressure washer to the backside of the bumper. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So that'll be, uh, that'll be a holdover for next week. We got good weather coming up on what will be our Monday. So today is, uh, fuck, I don't know, Wednesday or Thursday. When you live in a void, you don't ever really know the day. But anyway, you guys take care. And uh, be good to each other. Be good to yourselves. Give yourself grace. Think before you speak. Try not to have control over things you can't control, like traffic and other people. Take control over weather stripping. <laughs> Sometimes it, it can't be taken control of. But today, I fucking got it. Anyway, guys, take care. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.